books and we'll come back in the labs. So I've been tightening up the soap to make it functional, up and running again, and at some point I came across this fella. And guess what? It is time to finish it up. So if you are new to this channel, let me give you an update. This is a project I started quite a while back, must have been around two years now, and it is a Cartesian cantilever 3D printer. Cartesian means that it has three axes. One, two, three. X, Y, and Z. And cantilever, I think, is just the style of it. The ones having that column here, carrying the arm for X axis, and holding it just on one side. And 3D printer means that you use it to print stuff in 3D. By the way, this video is sponsored by Altium Designer. More on that later. To be just a bit more specific, this is an FDM 3D printer, as in fused deposition modeling. Which in real life words means that it melts plastic out of a string that you provide and lays it down here and there to produce your 3D objects. There are also other types of printers like SLAs or whatever, but let's stick with this one for now. For example, this structure here is also meant to be a 3D printer, also FDM, but this time instead of a Cartesian, this time it has a Corex Y philosophy. And consider this to be a sneak peek. I never talked about this one if you ask me. Now having this made so long ago, I hardly even remember what I shared on video, but I will assume everything, so I won't sweat it too much. I will just give you a quick tour, and if you have any questions, go and check the earlier videos of this make, which I will now link to you someplace on your screen. So this thing is fairly simple, as I remember back in the day I've tried to keep it as clean as possible. For a cantilever I mean. Here you have your x-axis. This one is the carriage for it, which carries the hot end, the part which will be melting the plastic. It slides the top of those two 8mm shafts with some bearings that are mounted to the back of it. Those four. Here you also have a belt to carry the movement, one end of which is firmly fixed onto the carriage, and the other one through a bolt used for tensioning. One side of this belt loops through a pulley which rotates freely, and the other one goes through, through a hole on this block to end up to a stepper motor which will be providing the movement for our X. Now this block we've talked about is the carriage for Z axis. Pretty much the same story here, except that this time we are using 12mm diameter shafts and the trapezoidal threaded rod to carry the movement, since this one is vertical and has to overcome gravity, plus the fact that compared to X and Y, this axis won't be moving that much. Here we have two steel tubes to hold the other end of it in the air, which just carries a bearing to keep the acme rod in place, and two holes on the underside to terminate the shafts. On the bottom side the tubes are mounted to the rest of the chassis through some oversized holes so that you can fine adjust the squareness of it when assembling. Same thing up here. And down here you can see the motor for powering Z. And on this side you've got the guts for X axis. Again some 12mm shafts along with the bearings a motor to drive it, and a belt which goes through a pulley up here and mounts on the carriage. One side is fixed, the other one through a tensioner. And that was all. Now let me cut those shafts in length and make a lid for this part here, where we will be having the controls of it. And there you have it. At first I was thinking of mounting this with some hinges up here, so that you can open it and access what's inside. But then I thought, 
it won't be opening that much, more likely. I will explain, but for now, let's mount the electronics. So as a controller for this, we're gonna be using, guess what, an Arduino Mega, at Mega 2560. On top of it there will be sitting a RAMPS 1.4 shield. Reprap Arduino Mega Pololu shield, I think that means. It will hold those tiny stepper drivers and all. And we are also gonna use this thing to operate the machine just by itself. This thing here is a Reprap Discount Smart Controller. It controls to our main controller through the RAMPS shield and it has all sorts of goodies. As you can see it has a buzzer, a rotary encoder slash button to operate the menu with, an emergency stop button, a 20x4 character LCD screen to display all the info, and an SD card reader. This gives you the ability to operate your printer without using a computer. You can have all sorts of control by navigating the menu, like changing your settings or jogging the machine, moving its axis and whatever. And due to the card reader you can store the G-code file for each different thing you want to print each time to an SD card and load it from there. Just like our CNC router. Now this needs to be mounted on the front panel we just made and I was gonna place it someplace here in the middle for, you know, symmetrical reasons. And that's why I was thinking about the hinges so that I can access the memory card without having to unscrew the whole thing. But then I thought we can mount it someplace here to the left of it and access the memory card from the side. Just like our CNC router. And that's what we are doing now. And there you have it. This extra recess here is because there is a potentiometer back here to control the screen's brightness. And I didn't want to remove it. And it goes like so. I have compromised the neatness of it just a tiny bit with this gap here. But you know, it is practical. Now we have to mount the controller, a power supply, a heat bed, an extruder, quite a lot of things. But before we do that, let's have a quick word about today's sponsor, Altium. Altium Designer is the world's most popular PCB design software, as it also says on the site. It is on the market for over 35 years now, developing and innovating, which is definitely one of the reasons that make it the most widely used PCB design solution. Well, as there are no other stuff. Truth is that it has a rather steep learning curve, but once you get it rolling, you are not that far from a professional on that trade. So if you're into those things, designing your own PCBs, make sure to give it a try. This thing is top notch. You can find the link to download the free trial right away down in the description. Now let's get on with our make. Now let's start with the bulky stuff. Power supply. I am thinking of mounting this to this side here and right about there. Because this side is a little bit wider than the opposite and it won't be seen from above plus it will leave us room for the Arduino someplace up here. I can also make a hole to the back side of the machine for our main cable to go directly out of the back. And there you have it. Now for the Arduino. At first I was gonna mount this in there. That's what this box is for. But then I realized that it is a bit too tight. 
Then again we have those two ribbons which connect this setup to the Arduino, which as you can see, they are not too long. So I think actually I'm gonna place it someplace here. And there you have it. We have everything mounted and they also clear the Y carriage. Well, now they do. Now, this is a 24 volt, 250 watts power supply just to have more oomph to power our heat bed with, which works both on 12 and 24 volts. Careful here. The ramp shield, stepper drivers, motors, they all work perfectly fine on 24 volts. But the ramp 1.4 shield is designed in such a way that it also powers the Arduino. Next, the power supply is input here and through some copper ways on the PCB, which are most likely designed with Altium. It also feeds our Mega with power. But Arduinos don't work on 24. So in order to use a 24 volt power supply with this setup like I am, you have to break the power connection between your shield and your Arduino on the shield. And just power it separately. I've already made a video about that when upgrading the CNC machine, so you can check it out there. For now we have the heat bed. This thing here is an aluminum heat bed. It has some electrical resistance built in, so when you give it power it draws current and heats up. Pretty much like your grill, in a smaller scale. Now we will use those in printers because as I understand when you make your prints on heated surfaces they tend to warp less as they cool down progressively and also they stick better to the surface so that they don't move half of your print and scrap your piece. Now of course that differs between different printing materials. For example you could print with PLA and without a heat bed but you were definitely gonna need one if you were printing ABS. Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong here, as I don't know my filaments just yet. So this needs to be mounted up here, using four countersunk screws, which go through some springs on the other side, so that you can fine tune the whole table to be level. And there is that. I will keep that in place using just wood screws for now, since I don't have neither the springs nor the countersunk machine screws that I'm gonna use. I also made a hole on the table to route the wires that will be powering this. That said, let's move on with extruders. An extruder is a setup that keeps pushing the plastic wire inside the nozzle where it is melted. This part is called the hot end. An extruder is this setup. Now we need to mount the hot end. So this little thing is where the plastic melts, in a chamber down here where it carries a heating element and a thermistor to check the temperatures. The plastic filament is fed to this by the extruder through an extra slipper tube here. So with those in place we can now wire the thing. But before we do that, it is now time we give it a good sounding and a nice paint job. Smile 
for the camp, caught on my face in your damn hands. You do with the crown, your list of demands. I was begging for mercy, but it didn't work. I went berserk at the clerk at the gas station. He could sense my frustration as you placed the gun in my face. So I did give it a paint, see what I did there. And also opened up some holes back here on the steel tubes to route some of the cables to keep it tidy. And we can now wire it up. Which is what we will do next time when we also talk about software. Ah, I am messing with you. I hate to leave you hanging. I already wired it. So I did wire it kinda temporarily because I wanted to see it moving. And I like it. But now for real, we talk more on that on the next video. Let me know if you think that I should get in depth with the software stuff, or I just bore you to death with those things and I should do them on fast forward. So until next time people, when we finish up this thingy hopefully, you'll have a nice one.